Welcome to The Truth, where we dig deep behind the headlines for the real deal. Joining me to discuss this week's top stories are Republican strategist and BT analyst Angela McGlowan, Green Party vice presidential candidate Rosa Clemente, and BT analyst and editor of TheDailyVoice.com, Keith Boykin. This week, presidential candidates John McCain and Barack Obama faced off for the second of three presidential debates. Both men beefed up their attacks, but did the nation learn anything new about either of their visions for a post-Bush America? <sighs> did we learn anything new? I mean, Rose, I know that your candidate wasn't there because, you know, this is really just a two-party race, right. even though there are four people running for president. Um, did we learn anything new? about either of these two candidates? No, I, I don't think we did. I mean, I think though we saw a collapse of a candidate, I thought <laughs> Which I, one was that? that yeah, would be John one? McCain. Oh, okay. um, and he, you, and, you, you ready? Know, that yeah. is my competition. <laughs> Cynthia McKinney is running on the Green Party ticket. And the fact that Cynthia McKinney and Ralph Nader and Bob Barr from the Libertarian Party being banned from these debates or not allowed because the Presidential Commission doesn't allow other parties to debate is unfair and it doesn't give the people uh, the issues that they need to be well, addressing. Well, Angela, and let me just say wait, 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 hold on, Rosa. Come sorry. in with me for a second because, I mean, Rosa makes yes, a point. She does. Would we be seeing more from Barack and McCain if there were two other candidates there, if they were being pushed to answer questions in a way that we haven't seen them answer questions yeah, yet? It's, it's a part of our democracy, and I think it is unfair that the, your candidates are not allowed to be at the table because we're about America, we're about freedom of speech, and people should hear different points of view. I do disagree with you, though. McCain did not implode. <laughs> at the end that. of the day, okay. he had a lot of substance. But Obama's very charismatic. He's very good with his talking points. He's very good. Yeah, well, Keith, you can add your little part after I finish with mine, uh, just, okay? Just, all right, all right. I don't need your help right here. Well, thank you very it. much. Thank you very much. <laughs> but in essence, Obama is very articulate, and he did have great eye contact. But at the end of the but day, we go it's about substance, and it's about what you're going to do to create a better America. And I think McCain is better on the it's, policy. It's so funny to hear her say that, because if you looked at what happened after Sarah Palin debated, the first thing they said, the Republicans, every one of them, she had great eye contact. And they didn't say anything about her substance at all, because they knew there was no substance. No, substance. And, they, and the reality is, you know, I disagree with somebody at the beginning of the show when they said that the candidates did not attack the issues this week. I think they did attack the issues. It's just that John McCain spent so much time talking about Bill Ayers and all this other nonsensical He's stuff while Ayers at the same time the, the debate, economy Keith. is collapsing. Yeah, because he didn't have Keith. the courage to say that to, to Barack Keith. Obama's face. But he said it the, week, the day before, the day after, and he refused to say so it when Barack was Obama was there. Hold on, wait, 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 because I, I, y'all about to go boxing and I need y'all to reel it in for a minute. I mean, let, let's deal with one of those issues. I mean, nice. they <laughs> Welcome back to The Truth. Wall Street's tumble has left many of us wondering what the fallout will be to their wallets. My next guest will use her financial expertise to help demystify what the crisis means to many of us. Please welcome the money coach, Lynette Kilfani-Cox. Lynette, thank you so much for joining me. What are some real tidbits, some morsels, some things people can take away with them uh, to, to turn the tide on their own personal financial plays? Right. I think three things really loom large when I think about the takeaways that most consumers should think about. First, protect your credit rating at all costs. You know, I think right now having great credit is better than cash in the bank, if you can believe it. Because if you have shoddy you know, credit right now, you're doomed in this current environment. Mm. Secondly, you need to start hoarding cash. Be very conservative in your spending. Watch your budget. Don't fall victim to that. Keeping up with the Jones mentality, and you know a lot of us can do or that. Or the Jacksons. Yeah, or the Jacksons. <laughs> exactly. And so that's definitely something to watch out for. And then thirdly, monitor your accounts. Like, keep an eye on things. Watch out what's going on with your checking, your savings account. Make sure that if you do have some, a little bit of money put aside in a bank, that it's with a federally insured bank, mm. one that you can get FDIC insurance protection from. So if the bank fails, goes under, up to $100,000 of your hard-earned savings will be protected. Thank you so much for My coming pleasure. by. I appreciate thank it. You. you all, one more time, thank you. Her book, Zero Debt, The Ultimate Guide to Financial Freedom, is in bookstores right now. 
You all, this has been an extremely rough week for a lot of Americans between damage done by Hurricane Ike and the terrifying economic collapse on Wall Street. A lot of folks are feeling shaken up, to say the least. But before we go, I want to remind everyone that while our government is busy bailing out well-paid banking tycoons, we've got a neighbor to the south for whom no such relief is in sight. I'm talking about Haiti. Just 500 miles from the United States coast, the tiny nation is in a world away when it comes to living standards, and that's even in the best of times. This hurricane season, Haiti has been particularly hit hard. Four major hurricanes have killed nearly 600 people and left as many as one million Haitians without homes. Yes, we face a mortgage crisis, but the crisis in Haiti should help us put our issues in perspective. Their infrastructure has been battered, toppling cities and destroying roads. Food Food shortages have reduced Haiti's poor to the point of starvation. The heart-wrenching images of starving teenage girls tangled in razor wire while trying to get food just won't seem to leave my head or my heart. Please visit a website aiding the relief effort like Wyclef'sYelly.org and give what you can. Sometimes giving to others, even in the midst of our own troubles, is the greatest gift we can give to ourselves. I'm Jeff Johnson, and that's the truth.